Hey there. Some people have asked me about what OSC is and how to use it properly. OSC stands for Open Sound Control. So I decided to make this little video as kind of a primer. A lot of my interest lies in audio applications, uh, which is what OSC is meant for. But just like MIDI, which came out in the 80s, uh, which stands for D uh, Musical Instrument Digital Interface, it's got a lot of different uses other than just music. The old Gravis pads for PC were plugged into your 7-pin MIDI port on the computer. Even today, the Xbox 360 controllers use MIDI data to control the games you play on your Xbox. It does use Bluetooth to send the data wirelessly, but it's formatted and parsed like a MIDI message when the console decodes it and uses it for control data. So, OSC is... It's much better than MIDI because it's, it's, it uses a widely adopted technology... Uh, for its transmission medium. It it talks in UDP and it's compatible with TCP which basically means is, you, is that if you have a controller sending OSC messages out you can control anything on the planet that is connected to the internet and listening for your data. Uh, there's applications are like endless. Uh, of course you can play musical instruments that's kinda what it was designed for in the beginning uh, the resolution is a lot better than MIDI. MIDI is 7-bit that's why whenever you're playing notes or talking about MIDI volume, you've got a, a, a range of values between 0 and 127. So it's not very uh, it's not very dense as far as resolution is concerned. Um, whereas OSC is a lot more open in that in that regard. Um, but so you can play musical instruments, you can do it locally or over the internet. You could have like multiplayer musical sessions if you want, I guess if that makes any sense, but you can do it over the internet, uh, even things like, because Open Sound Control uses the internet, or uses internet protocol, surgeons can use it to control robots to do a procedure somewhere else other than their hospital, you know, or their country, that kind of thing, you get the idea. Um, so it really means that suddenly, like, all of our Bluetooth and Wi-Fi networks have become way more useful, not just for checking Facebook and playing online games and that kind of thing. Uh, it's this infrastructure we've already got, and OSC uses it. So this is my demonstration. Uh, I'm using a Samsung Galaxy tablet to send my OSC messages. Uh, you could also use a phone. Um, I can't use my phone because I'm currently using it to record this. But uh, Samsung Galaxy, you could use an iPhone, um, depending on the software you're using. I'm using a software called Touch OSC right there which uh, it's available for Android and iOS which means it'll work on all your iDevices um, it's free which is great and it's sending the data through Wi-Fi to my computer on my computer I'm using Max MSP as the receiving software it's kinda of like a graphical programming language Max is kind of expensive especially for just a regular end user Mind you, if you're doing a lot of projects, it might be worth it to you, especially if you're someone that likes dabbling with stuff in computer. It costs about as much as uh, Photoshop. Uh, last I checked, it was about 500 bucks. Maybe Photoshop's a little more expensive. If you're a student or an educator, you can get that for about half price, I think, 250 bucks. And they just came out with a really big update, so it's better than ever. Um, there's also a program just like this but it's it's free it's developed by the guy that originally invented this he doesn't work for this company anymore and it's called pure data which is all the same stuff just has less uh, a less sexy interface that kind of thing uh, because it's it's open source but uh, it's a good program it does all the same kind of things and you don't have to pay for it so I mean that's up to you for preference wise I like Max I like pure data as well but for this case I am using Max so our first step since we've got touch OSC running on the tablet we have to set up our OSC network so here we've got to set up our IP address our host which will be my computer where we're sending it to and what port we send it out on on the router so I've already I've already gone through this I went to the command line I typed IP config and got my IP address from the router it's kinda hard to focus on here. Anyway, it's all punched in and I've got the port going out. My computer is wired up using an Ethernet cable and my tablet is hooked up 
on the Wi-Fi, which is also a great advantage because even though they're hooked up in different ways, they're hooked up to the same router, they're on the same network, it does not matter. So, uh, we've even got the local IP address of my tablet as shown here, and I can have an incoming port for OSD messages coming back from the computer if I'd like. Now, on the computer, on the Max MSP side, um, some of this might not make sense if you're not familiar with Macs, but I've got this object called UDP Receive, and it's set to port 8080, which is what I've got my outbound port set on my tablet. So this program will receive anything coming to my IP address on this computer using port 8080. And then we've got some other objects here that route the messages in a certain way. OSC messages are parsed just like internet addresses. So you've got... Uh, like a base URL, it's not really a URL, but if you can kind of understand, like a directory structure, you've got uh, your your root directory or your root location, and that branches out. And so we've got um, all of these parameters, each have their own address. With their controls, a slider, or one of these buttons, or a toggle, or this... Uh, like a trackpad kind of thing. So I got this all set up and routed properly. With OSC you have to know what the addresses are so you can prog that, program them into your receiving application, which is what I've done here. Touch OSC has a bunch of preset layouts. Um, this is the Android version. Simple, Mix 2, Mix 16. Basically, um, it's got sliders, up and down, some toggles, that kind of thing. And basically you find out what all of these different little widgets and items actually do, what the information they send is, what it, how it's parsed, and you put that into Macs or your receiving application. Now for this, I've used Mix, or I've used Simple, the simple layout, which looks pretty simple, obviously. Um, you can do custom layouts on the iOS version of Touch OSC. The thing is, is that OSC, Touch OSC doesn't have the monopoly on OSC. We can, we can make any program, if you've got the programming skills, that um, can send messages basically over the internet to use OSC. So the great thing is, is that Touch OSC is not the only program you can use. I've got a couple more on the Android. One's called Droid OSC. There's a few others. Um, Touch OSC is by far one of the most popular ones. For iOS, you can actually make custom layouts, which is nice. Android, uh, the guy says it's coming, so hopefully that comes soon. I guess it depends on whether or not you're an Apple guy or an open source guy or whatever. Personally, I'm, I like Android, so I will wait patiently for the Android app for custom layouts to come out. In any case, we've got the IP address set up, we've got the computer receiving the proper data, and I've got my nice little layout here after you already saw the programming. Now, let's see if I can do this with one hand. As I move this up, you can see on my computer it's moving. Complete wireless remote control. And it's multi-touch. Obviously, on the tablet. And OSC is so fast, because it works at the speed of your internet, that even though the messages come in one at a time, they come in such rapid, fast succession, as fast as your internet connection, or as fast as your router can handle, that for all intents and purposes, everything works simultaneously. Which I think is a great, big advantage. We've got some toggles. They're toggled on. We'll go to the next screen. We see kind of a, a MIDI style sort of beat pad. And and it's working all wirelessly. Now at the moment this just kind of seems like a bit of a toy. But, if you can just imagine, nothing's really being done right now. This is just showing 
the data coming in in a specific way um, as far as the layouts that come default with TouchOS C are arranged. I've got these in here. This, these objects are just receiving the data. What we can do from this point is hook these objects up to something. Like, hooray, so this slider can move around. You know, big deal. But, let's say we hook that slider up to the light dimmer in your kitchen. Sounds like a silly proposition, maybe. Like, maybe you have to run a Cat5 cable to your light switch. Who knows? There are different possibilities for doing that kind of thing. Uh, my favorite, uh, at least one I've been playing around with right now, is Arduino. This little thing is a microcontroller. It's open source. They're very cheap. You can, If you know a little bit about electronics, you can do a little bit of research. There's lots of tutorials. You can hook this thing up to interact with MaxMSP on the computer, and if you can send OSC messages to MaxMSP to control something, you can send those messages back out to Arduino, which works using mostly voltage control and that kind of thing to control things. So you can walk into your house, whip out your Android, talk to it, and control your home. This has been a uh, piece of great interest for some people I've talked to, and myself. I plan to make kind of a future home like, like you see in the science fiction movies. All that kind of stuff is possible. You can ask your house to turn on the lights. You can remote control the blinds on your windows if you build you know, a set of blinds that could be controlled by motors, that kind of thing. Um, you can have speakers installed around your house and little sensors that sense where you go, whether they're infrared beams or ultrasonic sensors, that kind of thing that can detect as you're walking down a hallway and turn on the lights as you go down the hallway using this little open source microcontroller. They're cheap. This one came fully uh, fully assembled. It's They're 30 bucks a piece and that's if you buy them from like Adafruit or SparkFun. Um, you can get them on eBay for even cheaper than that. And there are tons and tons and tons of clones because it's open source. So there's a bunch of different people that have taken this and they've, they've messed with it. Some have made more powerful versions. Some have made some that are more specifically suited to using the internet. You can buy shields, which are basically pre-designed circuits that are designed in the same form factor as the Arduino board and just sit right on top where all the pins line up and then suddenly you've got extra functionality like playing audio or using the internet or uh, using GPS. All sorts of interesting things can be done with this little guy. Uh, right now this is my experimenter's kit so I got this little breadboard on there but the chip itself is just this little thing. Look, it's the size of my finger. Maybe, I don't know what, three and a half inches by two and a half inches, like it's tiny. You can use this like almost anywhere. USB hooks up to the computer. You can use it with a nine volt battery or a nine volt adapter or power with USB. So you get these little Arduinos, put them all over your house, use them to control things. Music, lights, blinds, that sort of thing. Then you use, um, you could use TouchOSC to control them directly. You could set up algorithms and programs on your computer to detect when you're moving through the house, to make your music or your lights follow you and turn off behind you, that kind of thing. And with like a home server set up in a closet somewhere that is interfacing with all these little Arduino units, um, you can use OSC wirelessly to control them. And then you go into basic voltage control, electronics, that kind of thing, when you build your little circuits to have your Arduino control the hardware in your home. The possibilities are endless. I could go on and on and on and just babble like I've probably already been doing. But I just wanted to show this to you. This is really, really interesting stuff. All wireless. And it's called open sound control, but that doesn't mean it has to be sound. So... Uh, I will put this little patch up on my website as soon as I have it up, as soon as I have some more things to actually throw up on the website when I get it completed. And uh, hopefully we can start talking about anything your imagination can come up with. So have fun out there.